giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We're going to go ahead and get into the U.S. East um, recap portion. Um, so we're going to go in alphabetical order, starting out with Connecticut. Um, it was a 24-team state championship. Um, I don't have any videos of it, but um, the League of Extraordinary Ro Roboticists were both the winning Alliance captain and Inspire Award winners. And I remember them from Supers last year. They won the Connect Award at Supers. So they look like they're keeping up with... Um, their past and MC squared robotics got second place inspire and they were the winning Alliance first pick. Um, the zeros and ones was the second pick of the winning Alliance and singularity and um, single singularity technology got third inspire. Uh, now we're going to go to the Delaware state championship and Delaware is a very unique state because they don't have very many teams. Um, so their championship was actually less than 20 teams. Um, so they had alliances of two there. Um, team O365, it's about time that they got to Worlds again. So they won the Inspire Award actually, and they will be going back to the World Championship for the first time since 2015. And team 14541, Dragonators, were the winning alliance captain. And one of the things that I wanna point out about Delaware is they have a really unique meet system that I think if we don't want to move towards district model, this meet leagues, this meet system that they have is very, very beneficial to teams. So in effect, it creates, they have like eight meets, but they all don't count for anything. You have to go to two meets to go to their state championship, but the meets don't count for anything. So it's just good practice for these teams. Um, I know back in Rescue and Velocity Vortex, before they had the system, teams would show up to the state championship for the first time. They had never competed before. But with this meet system, they're actually able to bring up their teams. And I can tell you um, from watching these teams, they've definitely increased in their um, capabilities and they're definitely becoming a stronger state. Um, they've definitely tried to restrict how many out-of-state out teams come into that state in order to allow their... Um, own teams to advance. And I think we're gonna see that a lot from these upcoming states that I'm gonna talk about. Um, the Kentucky State Championship was on January 26th. Um, they had semi-open borders, so they tried to keep it towards people that were near themselves. So they would first let Kentucky teams in and then bordering states. And that's something that a lot of states have been doing. Uh, the winning alliance was Electric Legends, Pixelated, and the Firewires. And the Inspire Award winners were Rocks, second place was Tech Hogs, and third place was Firewires. Um, so we're seeing a little bit of overlap there. Um, one of the things to watch was Kentucky, they actually had around 400, 400 plus in all of the finals matches. So it was really, really cool to see how that state's growing. I think this was their inaugural, right? Was this their inaugural? Least, yeah, so. this was their inaugural oh, wow. um, championship and to f have 400 mm -hmm. scores in the finals. That's mm -hmm. pretty amazing. Now we're going to go to Massachusetts. I'm going to slow down a little bit for this one because there's a lot to talk about. Um, so there were a lot of 400 plus scores, but this is finals match number one. Um, and this is between two of the previous world champions, um, Brainstormers versus Two Bits and a Bite. So Brainstormers, um, they were the winning Alliance captain at Detroit Worlds last year, and Two Bits and a Bite was the winning Alliance second pick. And uh, Brainstormers is Red Alliance, Two Bits is Blue Alliance. They both come out solid autonomous. I think they both had 160 autonomouses here. And so they end autonomous, and then you see there's like some late motion on the Blue Alliance. It didn't get called, but I'm not sure what effect that may have had on the match. But now... When, if you watch the top left of your screen, you're going to see Brainstormers in two bits fighting for minerals. They're going to be fighting, and now they're in the bottom right of your screen. They're going to be fighting for minerals the entire time. It's high defense, and I think that just because it's not called here doesn't mean it's not going to get called at Worlds for penalties of blocking. But mm -hmm. to be able to play this sort of defense, that's what the future of this game is going to be. That depot bot being able to mess with the crater bot that could definitely change how this game is played. Because right now, most of those crater bots, they're playing unopposed, no defense. And we'll see a little bit more of this interaction when we get to the Maryland State Championship. But you can see how they're all fighting too with each other. And then, um, interestingly, uh, 
it was brainstormers that picked a robot that goes into the crater every single time and they're one fast robot you'll see them uh they've got a surgical tubing intake i think it's team one two they start with one two something and you'll see them going back and forth and now watch 4029 which is two bits in a bite they stand right in the middle of the crater <gasps> and they aren't letting brainstormers get anything mm -hmm. like they're just right there. They're intaking, so technically it's legal. Yeah. But they're not letting brainstormers get anything. And mm -hmm. how, they're slowing down brainstormers so much. And their crater bot is just rolling. They've got no defense being played on them. They're all good to go. So I think that was one of the things that was sort of controversial about this match. But mm -hmm. I think Two Bits and a Bite did do a really good job playing legal defense here. Um, and then in the end game. Just like Nathan always says, hangs are everything. And it ended up being the deciding factor in this match. Um, you'll see right here, with four seconds left, two bits in a bite, falls down right before the buzzer rings. And that ends up costing them the match by one point. So that was just one of the cool things in the Massachusetts State Championship. Um, very high defense. Brainstormers ended up being the Winning Alliance captain with Pioneer Robotics as Winning Alliance first pick and Lightspeed as Winning Alliance second pick. Um, Evolution Robotics won the Inspire Award. And at Massachusetts, they do something interesting where they don't hand out a second or third place Inspire Award. So it's kind of interesting to see how different regions do this. <laughs> so, uh, Ishan, yeah. how many teams advanced from um, Massachusetts? I believe it was four. So I oh, think okay. the reason why they don't give out second and third place Inspire right. is because they wanted to um, have the entire winning alliance advance. Wow. So wow. that's something that a lot of people will like, but a lot of people also will dislike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions? An interesting thing about 4029 defense is with the way the blocking rules are written, um, you have to block either an area which is defined as an entire place. So the crater would be an entire area. So in that case, they'd either have to be blocking all of the remaining minerals in that crater or blocking access to the entire crater. So and they're doing really, neither of those. Yeah. And there's 18 inches call. of space for brainstormers to move around. It is. So I think it did that, really slow them down. Yeah. So that's going to be a future strategy. Sure. But, Any yeah. diagonal bot is going to get stuck doing that. Because as soon as you get in front of them, they're done. They can't intake that way. So, um, any other comments about Massachusetts? Or we will move on to the Maryland DC Championship, uh, which took place on March 3rd. It's a 52 team dual division event. Um, and in the two divisions, there were two top teams Mechanical Paradox Cubed and G Force in the Opportunity Division. Wizards.exe and RoboCavs Gold were in the Curiosity Division. I've got Finals Match 2 pulled up. Um, while the Autonomous is running, I'll say Inspire went to Wizards.exe for first place, Mechanical Paradox Cube second, G Force third place, and then Winning Alliance Captain was G Force, and their first pick was Mechanical Paradox Cubed, and Loading was their second pick. So as you watch this match, it came out perfect autos on both sides. That was actually something that was a little bit rare at the um, at the Maryland State Championship. There was some auto messes, and I think that did cost some people matches. It did cost us a match in finals match one. So, um, But you'll see Mechanical Paradox Cubed has one of the diagonal slides, and you'll see that Wizards, which is the wooden robot that's going to the depot, or that's scoring depot side for the blue alliance, they're going to start getting in the way with Mechanical Paradox Cubed a little bit. It's not as bad as two bits in a bite, um, but it's definitely there. So, again, this is just another recurrence of defense, and I think that the key strategy is going to be one depot bot, one crater bot, and that's how we're going to make sure that all teams, um, that's how I think teams are going to be playing it at Worlds. Do you think teams will be able to hit like these 500, 450, 470 matches if you're having like a depot bot play defense on both, like on either side? Like, is that yeah. something we're going to? It, it depends on how harsh the defense is and how harsh they're mm -hmm. calling at Worlds. I think there's so much subjectivity to this mm -hmm. game based off of what the ref thinks that. I, I, there's no way to tell until we get to the world championship and they start calling defense or they don't start calling defense. Right. Yeah. Right. 
And you can see that there's a lot of minerals on the field outside of the craters. So there were a lot of dropped minerals, which did end up costing the Blue Alliance this match. Um, but there's a little bit of interference here and there. Mm -hmm. um, now we're going to go on to the New Hampshire State Championship. There's not much to be said here. Gluten and Free destroyed on the robot game. Uh, there was a fun analysis about this. Um, go watch that if you're interested in seeing it. And the Inspire Award winner was 15534 Vertex. Um, for New Jersey, um, they're going to have their 46 team state championship. It's happening this weekend on the 10th. 11 teams will advance the world championship from it. There's some good teams um, like Land Bros, Overdrive, Critical Mass. Um, if you scroll down, you can see the entire list of teams, Tyler. Um, and so it'll be a pretty competitive event to watch. I hope they will have a live stream for that. Um, in New York, they have four different regions, which is kind of interesting. They split the state up into four parts. New York City region had their super qualifiers, and they'll be having their championship on the 10th of March. Uh, lots of top teams from New York, like Atomic Theory, Quantum Mechanics, the Rolling Drones. Quantum Mechanics was also at the Maryland State Championship, and they were part of the finalist alliance for their division. Um, for the Excelsior Championship, um, it actually got snowed out, so we've had a lot of New England weather. Uh, so it's going to be on March 9th, and so some of the top teams to see are the Corning teams, which are the Enderbots and Gorillabots, Team Beta, which I'll get to soon, Mechanical Melt Meltdown, and TARDIS, which I'll also get to mention too. The Long Island Championship is also on March 9th. And then the Hudson Valley Championship is on February 10th, and a lot of teams that went to Worlds last year will be there, uh, or were there. Uh, so it was February 10th. Uh, Beta was the winning alliance captain. They've got a large rotating arm, and there's some videos of them on YouTube from previous competitions. Um, the Red Hook Robo Raiders had an awesome uh, showing with they were part of the winning alliance. And they also won the Inspire Award. And Red Storm was also part of the winning alliance. Now we're going to go to the PA State Championship, which was on March and third, uh, March second and third. This was pretty much mini supers. I, there's no other way to put it. It was mini supers. Uh, they hosted it like a super regionals with two days, and they had very, very high production quality. Um, that video that, if Tyler, you could pull it up, that's the world record that was set by Land Bros and Team Tardis, who are both the Blue Alliance robots, um, and you'll see just how fast Land Bros is in this match. They have a very, very quick intake, and like mm -hmm. their slides move at the rate of a lot of other teams' <laughs> slides, but their intake is so fast that they're able to pick up those minerals and just deposit them. They don't even need mm -hmm. the diagonal slides to set this record. Um, and while they, this match is going on, I'll just say the winning alliance captain was Land Bros. They picked substantial monocephalic brainstem robotics team and Team TARDIS, and the Inspire Award went to the giant dinosaurphalic brainstem robotics team. Yeah. So something to note is Landbros set this world record with their second pick, which is yeah. really freaking rare. Like <laughs> it and it goes to show this was his personal best run just ever, including practice. And it goes to show how just dominant some teams are at FTC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the things to know is that yeah, he did this awesome record, but there's also going to be matches where he wasn't as consistent and that caused him to not be the number one seed. There's a reason why he's playing on the Blue Alliance in this match. Um, he couldn't have the number one seed. But one of the cool robots here, watch the Red Alliance robot that's playing Depot. They actually use Cable Chain for their extension slides. It's oh. one of the weird robots that I've seen. It's called the J-Bots. I think it's the most innovative thing ever. Uh, they use cable chain in order to extend and retract their arm. Um, any other thoughts on PA? Uh, just a quick um, clarification from our chat. Uh, Lambros were the first seed. They just lost they the coin toss for oh, the okay. finals. Okay. Oops, my bad. So the other division played red. Yeah, I oh, mean, uh, they still had uh, an awesome run at this map, oh, yeah. at this competition. Okay. Crazy. TARDIS uh, looks very interesting with their like rotating rotating bucket at the top. I mean, that wasn't <laughs> something I've seen a lot, so I just thought that was very interesting when I was watching the stream. Oh yeah, it's weird. Like, <laughs> I think PA had a lot of innovative robots that weren't mm -hmm. just the standards, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. 
do you guys think like scoring in auto like I, I we saw it from a couple teams here but like do you think like scoring in auto is going to be the deciding factor or is it just going to be minerals usually Mm-hmm. I think it's just going to be minerals. I don't think like scoring an auto will definitely help, but I think at the end of the day, it really comes down to how effective those cycles are of yourselves. Um, I, I I think that it'll really allow you to be that top team, right? Put it put as many minerals as possible, but I don't think it'll decide any matches. I right. think okay. also it's going to come down to auto and hang. I mean, whoever right. has the perfect right. auto and the perfect hang will win. Right. If you don't have those, you're going to lose. Right. I, oh no! Of, of course, absolutely. Yeah. I, I will caveat that with like you have to have the because basic. Because it's going to happen yeah. in one of the finals at Worlds, the team's going to lose a match because they miss a hang or they miss an auto. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And like making up, making up like fifty points or yeah, fifty points for a hang is like that's not easy in a finals in a World Finals match. Yep. So. so next is Rhode Island. Uh, the Raider bots were the Inspire Award winners, and Cybers were the Winning Alliance captain. Next was the VA State Championship, which was a very large event, 56 teams in a dual division with nine teams advancing, and there were only three out-of-state teams here. So um, some of the quote-unquote best award teams were there. Um, so, I mean, you had Schrodinger's Hat, the Frog Bots, a lot of the top teams when it came to award. Um, the max score was 370, so it wasn't in the 400s, but it was also early February. Um, one of the things that I am most happy about was the Team Frogbots. They advanced to Worlds for the first time. Every single year at Supers, they have the highest OPR, and they're the highest OPR that doesn't advance. And I'm really happy for the team to be able to advance, and um, they won the Inspire Award, which is incredible. The winning alliance captain consisted of Robolords, Robotroopers, and Hexadecimals. And one of the interesting things about this was it was so close it went to four matches for the final match because there was a tie in finals match three. So um, something to watch if you have a chance. Vermont uh, winning alliance was Team Beta, Gluten Free, and Roboken. Um, the Inspire third place was Lexington Legoheads, Precision Cutups, and Gonk Squad. And then West Virginia SA Championship, we've already talked about previously, but it was a small 24 team, and there was a huge analysis show of, about this. I think that wraps it up for the East. I covered every single state. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very thorough stuff. But I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really so interested just how, how much diversity there is. One thing that I just wanted to point out in the number of teams that advance. Because, um, what did we see here? Uh, P- Pennsylvania. What, what did they have? How many teams advanced out of Pennsylvania? They got, um, I, I don't know. It's, it was a pretty high amount for the number of teams that, uh, that was able to that that competed. Uh, like in New Jersey, also, uh, eleven teams advancing with forty six teams in the state. Um. Whereas 56 teams at, uh, I think, at Virginia um, with only nine advancement slots. Um, and I know, like, for example, in Oregon, we have 64 teams in our state championship with, again, nine advancement slots. So um, it's pretty interesting to see how FIRST, um, how FIRST creates um, their advancement lists, advancement criterias, and uh, mm-hmm. figures out how to send teams to Worlds. The closest mm-hmm. I can figure is it's by super region and by team size or state size, like, number of teams. So your oh, state championship can be size. however big. Um, yeah. But then you do have some variation, like South Super Region states tend to advance less. I know the it's the first time states. for a lot of teams for going to Worlds, and so it will definitely be a very different Worlds than it's ever been in the past. Um, mm-hmm. Another thing to note is states are starting to solidify their borders and not let anybody in. Like you saw VA, they only had three out-of-state teams at their championship. Maryland only had one out-of-state team at their championship. And I think that only the very small states that have to let teams in are letting them in. Once a state hits about 14 teams, I think they're starting to make the decision, yeah, we'd rather send our teams that may not be as competitive at the World Championship, but let them get inspired than let out-of-state teams in and let them advance through our state. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.